The Peace Organization My name is Debbie McKenna. as a state Come on. member Let's go. are, in fact, meeting the needs of our students and are answerable back to this community so we can authorize $4 million out of our Title I funds. Thank you, sir. That's all. I have a question. I just have a request for you. Thank you very much. And uh, say to you, ma'am, that I've noted, noted that and I'm going to make sure that comes up in the next topic because we as a board have never had that come before us. We've never been asked to vote on it. State Board of Good point you just made. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chappell. Our next speaker thank is you. Mike Shaws. You got it right. And so before the clock begins, you don't live in Wichita? No, I live in Wichita. Do you? You don't have students that attend no, USC 259? No, Okay, we will go ahead and hear from you, but understanding that you are not within the district, go ahead, sir. Sure. The top earning 1% of Americans are not satisfied with controlling 40% of the nation's wealth. Now, in the name of eliminating the state income tax, the rich men have come for our schools. The assault on public education is being perpetuated by the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC. ALEC pairs legislators with corporate executives providing model bills that are being used to strip funding from schools across the nation. The wealthiest Americans, including Kansans such as Charles Koch, use ALEC, the Kansas Policy Institute, and a myriad of other organizations to promote the legislation to defund our schools. The idea is to diminish the capacity of the public school system to adequately educate our children creating a higher demand for the private school industry. Governors and state legislators across the nation are working with ALEC to get public education. Governor Sam Brownback and the ALEC legislators in our state have slashed funding to our schools to promote the interests of their corporate donors, ignoring the protests of the people most affected by the changes to our school system. Parents, grandparents, students, and community leaders have spoken out against the budget cuts, the redistricting, and now the school closures, all to no event. Many of our teachers are afraid to speak out against these proposals for fear of losing their jobs. Traditionally, teachers unions would protect educators who speak out against school closures and other legislation affecting students. However, due to legislation drafted by ALEC and promoted by Koch-funded lawmakers, the unions are no longer strong enough to protect the teachers. This is not a coincidence. Public unions have been systematically weakened to silence our teachers as the state takes a wrecking ball to our schools. The billionaires will not be satisfied with closing these five locations. More schools will be closed and replaced with much larger factory-like factory facilities designed to save money rather than saving children. Instead of receiving the personal attention they deserve, the Kansas student will be reduced to little more than a number. The quality of public education will suffer, giving rise to private schools whose primary goal will be to provide the least while charging the most. Our students will be packed into enormous classrooms, drastically increasing the student-to-teacher ratio. All of this will result in our students receiving a substandard education, leaving them unarmed in the economy of the future. Kansas, being home to Coke Industries, is the testing ground for this anti-education agenda. Similar legislation drafted by the same people can be seen in states like Wisconsin, Ohio, Florida, Louisiana, Michigan, and New Jersey, just to name a few. We as Kansans need to put a stop to this now. Appealing to the school board may postpone the boundary changes and subsequent closures, but until we direct our efforts towards Governor Brownback, ALEC, Kansas Policy Institute, Coke Industries, and the other ALEC companies, we will continue to see coordinated legislation designed to rob our children of the educational services they need in the name of lining the pockets of the rich. They will close schools and working class neighborhoods, rebuilding them in higher income areas. This is Robin Hood in reverse, and our children deserve better. I'd like to take my last few seconds just to mention that I think that we should have freedom of speech in here when we do have the right to speak or when it is our turn to speak. That's all I have. Our next speaker is Lyle Ackerman.